In today's video, we will create an Azure function. Azure function allows you to run a piece of code in the cloud without having to provision a server. In this tutorial, we will write a function that resets an image uploaded to a blob storage. We will use Visual Studio, C Sharp, and the Azure portal. My name is Pat. If you are new here, consider subscribing because it motivates me to make more videos. Let's get into it. I am already logged into my Azure account and I'm about to create a storage account. I set the account name to Tech with Pat Storage. I select Western Europe as the location. I leave the other settings as is. I click on the Review plus Create button. Once the validation is complete, I can create the resource. The storage has been created. Let's add a container that will store the image to be resized. I call it normal size. Let's add another container that will store the images that have been resized. I call it reduce size. Let's move to the access keys section to copy the connection string. We will need it to make a connection with the Azure function. Click on Show Keys to display the connection string and let's copy it. The storage is ready. Let's create the function in Visual Studio. You can create a function directly in the Azure portal, but I prefer to create it on my local computer so I can test it and then deploy it to Azure. Make sure you have the Azure workload installed with Visual Studio, otherwise you won't be able to create and deploy a function. In Visual Studio, I create a new project. I select the Azure function template. I set the project name to image resize function. In the next screen, I need to select what is going to trigger the function. There are many triggers we can choose from. I select the blob trigger because our function will run when an image is uploaded to the blob storage. We paste the connection string that we copy from the portal. We set the path to the container that will receive images. In our case, it's the normal size container. And we create the project. Let's refactor some code in the project. I change the name of the function class to image resizer function. I also update the function name attribute. Let's move the connection string to the setting file. Local.settings.json holds settings for local development. I create a new entry in the values object. I call it blob connection string. In the function, I'm going to set the connection string at the class level. I use the storage account attribute and pass the key to the connection string in its constructor. Let's break down the signature of the function. The run method is the entry point of the function. If we take a high level view, a function needs a trigger to run. It uses a concept called binding to connect to other services. You use input binding to read data from a service and output binding to modify data. In C Sharp, you use attribute to configure triggers and bindings. The blob trigger attribute helps configure the triggering of the function. We configure it when we created the solution. The stream object is the file that has been added or updated in the blob storage. The path in the constructor of the blob trigger indicate the container to watch. The string name creates a binding expression that you can use in the code to access the file name of the blob. We will configure the output binding later. Even though resizing an image takes few code to write, I will abstract it so we can focus on the function itself. Let's create an interface called iImageResizer. I 
I add a resize method that takes two stream object as parameters. The first one represents the image we want to resize as a stream, and the second represents the resize image as a stream also. Let's create a concrete implementation. I create a new class named Image Resizer. This class implements the iImageResizer interface. Let's add a package that will help resize the image. It is called image sharp. Now we can implement the resizing. We load the input stream into an image object. We call the mutate and resize method to resize the image in place. We resize the image to half its original size. We save it to the output stream. This is a small project. However, we are going to use dependency injection to inject an implementation of I image resizer into the function. Let's set up dependency injection. I add a new class named startup in the project. We need to add some packages to make dependency injection works. The first one is microsoft.azure.functions.extensions. The second one is microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. Let's add the function startup attribute which specifies the type name used during startup, in our case, is the startup class. The class needs to inherit from the function's startup class. In the configure method, the builder class exposes the services property to register dependencies. Let's register iImageResizer as a singleton that will be resolved by the image resizer. By default, a function class is static. We need to add the image resizer field, which is not static. So let's change the class to be non-static. Let's inject the service into the function. Now we can use the service in the run method. Let's add a try catch block to capture any exceptions. If something bad occurs, we log the exception. Let's invoke the resize method on the image resizer. This method takes two arguments, an input stream and an output stream. The input stream is what the blob trigger gives us when we add an image to the normal size container. In the function definition, we can also add the output binding, which will save the stream to the reduced size container. We use the blob attribute, in its constructor, we set the path to the container where we want to save resized images. The output parameter is the stream that will be saved to the container. We pass the argument to the resize function. We log a message when the resize is done. Now we can test the function. I run the project in Visual Studio. You can see a console app running. This is the host for my function. Let's add an image to the normal size container. When the image is uploaded, the function is triggered and you can see that I eat the breakpoint. An instance of image resizer has been injected correctly, you can see the name of the image. You can also see that the log in the console that says that the image has been saved. Let's check in the reduce size container. The file is there and its size is smaller than the original, which means the image has been resized correctly. The function works fine. Now let's deploy it to Azure.
right click on the project and then select publish to launch the publish wizard. Select Azure as the target and click next. I select Azure function app windows to host my application on a windows VM. Depending on your need, you might choose something else. In the next window, select your Azure subscription. In the function apps section, click on the plus button to create a new function in your Azure subscription. I leave the default selections, but I select a location close to me. So I select West Europe and then I click create to create the app in Azure. It takes a bit of time. Once the function is created, we click finish and we are ready to deploy the app. Click on the publish button. After a few seconds, the function is published. Let's move to the Azure portal. If I go in my resources, you can see the function app. I can launch its URL. The function is up and running. Before testing it, we need to make few changes. First, let's configure application insights so we can see our logs. We select the image resize function, then monitor, then configure. I select an existing application insights. We are done here. Let's also add the connection string of the storage to the configuration. In the configuration section of the function app, we add a new entry. The name is the same as in the application. The value is the connection string. We can test the app in Azure. Let's go back to the storage explorer. I upload a new image in the normal size container. Let's check in the radius size container. You can see the new image is smaller than the original. Let's make sure that our function run for sure. We go back to the function app and click on functions, then monitor. We should see the success count value increased because our function ran successfully. It takes up to five minutes to get the result. After a few refreshes, I'm able to see the success count value and the logs from the application. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support the channel, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon.